doing well i hope it, my sound is working <laughs> so um this has been a frequently requested video actually um and i've had a lot of requests to do a video for beginners on cake decorating um so i decided decided to do a live and i'm not expecting a lot of people here so i understand that um but if you did miss it you can always always watch the replay later so the topics that I'm going to cover, okay, well, the first one is baking tools and equipment that you need for the beginner and cake decorating tools that you'll need for the beginner. I'm also going to go through fondant and the types of fondant and also frequently asked questions with, you know, problematic um, subjects that, you know, beginners might face when they're just starting out so i hope you've had a good new year hope so um i'm all put away ready now to start the new year and i hope you are too so um i might do a little demo later on using fondant and we'll see how much time we have um so grab a coffee <laughs> and uh, sit comfortably and we'll we'll start shortly and just to say i do have dogs and this is live from my kitchen and sometimes sometimes um yeah, they bark. So apologies. Apologies already in advance. Um, and just to also to say, I'm not a professional. Um, I'm just a home baker. And although I do know a little bit about cakes uh, and decorating them, I'm not an encyclopedia. <laughs> so forgive me if I don't have all the answers. But I promise you that I'll do my best to answer every question I can to the best of my knowledge. Okay, so let's get started. So for baking tools, baking tools. Now, Cheryl Marland, um, she's new to baking and she's got a few bits and bobs and uh, she's fumbling through. So maybe this will help Cheryl and a few of you. Um, I'm also going to give a shout out just briefly if I can find my shout outs. Um... Oh, I can't find it just yet. I'll do that later. So we're going to run through the basic tools. Now, yes, there might you might have more than this, but I'm just saying for the beginners starting out, because cake decorating is a great hobby, but it can be expensive, but it can be as expensive as you want it to be. So you'll need a bowl. You'll need, obviously, a bowl. I have various sizes, but um, just a cake bowl. For your mixing okay you'll need one of those and a sieve is always important when you're baking always 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 important because you need to get that air in you must get that air in um cake tins well there's different sizes i think when you're starting off it's best to start with maybe a six and an eight and uh, these are rather deep pans but um Hi Cheryl, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> I've got a, I've got you here. I've just been talking about you. I hope your ears weren't burning. Right. So, cake tins. You can spend as much as you want, but I always say if you're starting off, a six and an eight inch deep pans, and also the small sandwich tins. I don't have one here to show you, but you get my drift. And especially if you're making homemade cakes for the family you buy two and you can just make a victoria sandwich cake you know they're always a good thing to have in especially when you're you know starting don't get too many tins because um you're just starting out and it's expensive it really is so cake tins a good solid one with a solid base is always a good one to have um ideal for christmas cakes too and i know a lot of you have been um following my tutorial you know when i show you how to make christmas cakes and these are the best tins nice deep nice and deep and solid um you know you know you know what you know what you know what to get now they range from about oh, five pound up depending on the size and the quality but it's, again just spend what you can afford and i've got a handheld whisk and to be honest with you i do have a standalone uh, mixer and uh, I do use it occasionally but I have to say it's occasionally um, I'm a home baker so I don't do large quantities 
and this is a godsend it's absolutely fantastic doesn't cost a fortune i used to have a, a, an older model and i think it was i think it was 15 quid from argos <laughs> hi janet hi cheryl <laughs> hope you're all doing well um so i will be answering some of my subscribers questions as well hi natalie welcome welcome oh hi i hope you've got your cup of coffee cup of tea cup of chow <laughs> can you hear me okay by the way so yeah mixers handheld i absolutely swear by mine hello brenda hi brenda how are you doing and happy new year to you too um i swear by my handheld mixer i have used my big one and i have used it but i don't think it gets as much air in as a handheld because you're in control so you know save yourself some money and get yourself one of these instead so i move that out of the way so i'm moving them as i go <laughs> so i've got a lot of stuff to show you just uh, run through the baking equipment now a set of skills is always something you need i've got a couple but you only need one hi ah miss that sorry natalie but it will come back it will come back um a pair of swing scales, absolutely necessary. Um, a nice wide one, because if you're making Christmas cakes and there are rather a lot of fruit there, you need something nice and sturdy to hold all of those weights. So yeah, a set of scales, always a blessing. Now, I have, and these were from a, a not a, I wouldn't say it was a cheap shop, but you know, was it, was it home bargains? Possibly home bargains. It's a cooling rack. I've got a few of those, but start with one, and uh, it's always best to cool your cakes on these because it it sits above the surface of the workshop and allows the air to circulate around your cake and cool it without making it damp and soggy and things like that. So definitely recommend, and you can pick them up for about a pound. I know I did. <laughs> Oh, yes, if I can get a bargain when it comes to cake decorating and also at home bargains, just to mention, and, you know, you can get them online too. Um, cake boards. Now, these are nice deep ones, which I always think look nice when you're wanting to do a maybe a birthday cake for one of the family members. And again, I, I do believe it was probably under a pound, uh, maybe a pound, maybe, but I, I don't think so, actually. I think it was a little bit less. And get a few in, especially when you're wanting to start baking something special for your family. And that's the best way for, for you to start. Start doing things for your family. Start with maybe cupcakes, for example, and a good cupcake tin. Ah, I haven't got mine out. I should have done. But uh, yeah, a cupcake tin, usually a set of 12, usually a set of 12. And you can pick them up for about three to four pound and they will set you in good stead. Now, here's the thing, and I'll show you now. Cupcake cases, here's we go, because I'm a little bit of a stickler when it comes to cupcakes. <laughs> As in, I don't, there's certain products that aren't very good, I have to say. And sometimes when you buy cupcake cases, and I don't know if any of you have found this, that the grease, <laughs> not that there should be grease, but they look wet and limp after you've made them or baked them. I'm at work, so if I suddenly disappear, it's because I, oh, goodness, oh, no, oh, no, you're working hard. Yes, my husband's doing the same, and uh, my son, my daughter's homeschooling here, but she's old enough to crack on. <laughs> Cupcake cases. I find these metallic ones really hold the shape in the baking process, and um, they don't fall if you understand and they look very nice indeed and they don't look greasy or especially if you're using maybe a white and you and, it, and it's a chocolate cake you can see it all kind of around the edge and it doesn't look as appetizing um these are i can't remember the brand but look about i'm sure pme do a good brand just out of interest i don't think these are them but they do a good solid cupcake case and it's really hard to find because a lot of them are almost like grease proof paper to be fair. So we've got cupcake cases, always a good way to start for my beginners. A nice little palette knife. Um, I've got different sizes but I'm just showing you. I can't show you everything and I know there'll be things on here that I haven't shown you but I'm just going to show you 
the basics, okay? You can progress as you grow and gain more. I mean, you can make it the most expensive hobby in the world if you want. I tend not to. I just, I've never, re I've, I've got what I need now and I, I don't usually, I'm very rarely buy anything more unless it breaks or something like that. So yeah, a good palette knife for smoothing your buttercreams. Or, and it, to be honest with you, I use it for cheesecakes and all sorts of things. It's a great to have different sizes of palette knives, but this little mini one is my favorite, absolute favorite. And that's basically all you need to bake a cake. <laughs> that's all you need to bake a cake, apart from obviously the ingredients. So we're gonna go now into the tools need for, needed for cake decorating. And as I say, it can be the most expensive hobby in the world, or it can be something that you just want to give it a go and you just want to know what the basics are. And I know Cheryl was kind of kind of bobbing along thinking, well, I've got this, but what do I use it for? And things like that. So we're going to kind of run through just for my beginners here. I'm sure there's lots of tools out there that you can buy, but I'm just saying what I've got. And the things, and look, I've got things I've never used either. So I'm going to show you the things that I do use, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'll bring over <clears throat> my box of tricks. Sorry if I'm in the way. And this is exactly how I have them. I've got little, they, they were plant pots and I recycled because I'm like that. Um, and I've got lots of different things in here, but I'm going to run through what I use regularly and why, okay, for cake decorating. Well, first of all, you're going to need a smoother, all right? And you can actually pick these up really cheaply. And I keep saying home bargains, um, but yeah, I bought mine online, but I've seen them a lot cheaper in there. So a smoother. And you'll need that to polish your fondant, okay? And as I say, the, the pence rather than pounds, I promise you that. And you'll need rolling pins. Do you like my rolling pin? <laughs> Mystery Baker, my husband got it for me for Christmas. It's more of a novelty. I won't be using it. I'll just put it on display. But rolling pins. And when you're using fondant, you need kind of a... It's almost like solid plastic. It probably is solid plastic and it has some weight to it. It's not light and you need that. And I have different sizes of these rolling pins. But when I'm making small projects, you only need the one. And this one's an excellent size and it's perfect for doing your cupcakes, decorating cupcakes and also making um, shapes and patterns. And I, I use it all the time. So that is a must, I think definitely a must and I'll just shift that out of the way as you can see I've got a, a mat here nice little mat um <clears throat> you don't need one of these this is not what I'm suggesting you go out and buy immediately and when I first started uh, a few years back now I just used you know your placemats that you eat your dinner off you know the hard it protects the table, you know, like a dinner plate mat. I just used a solid one of them because they were nice and smooth. And I made sure it was clean. And they're ideal for rolling on. So you don't need to go out and spend money on a cutting mat. Um, but I have one. So it is something you consider as you move through the caking world, all right? <clears throat> so, tools. I have lots of these as you can see, and I mainly use the yellow ones for some reason. And this is more for cake decorating. This tool here, this one here, I think I use the most. I absolutely adore it, absolutely. And it's a scribing tool and you can make texture. I use it for, if I've got anything delicate, I can scoop. And then it's got the other end that I can use. Oh, it's just, when you're modeling and making things and applying things to cakes, it really is something that I use a lot, okay? And so if you see these yellow ones on sale, buy them. <laughs> um, and they're not a lot. I think they cost, well, to be honest with you, you can buy the pink ones from Home Bargains for a pound, but they don't last as long. I've had these a few years now and they're still going strong. And I think I paid about five pound they're probably cheaper now they're probably cheaper so that's that 
I do have brushes, little brushes like this, and I use them for painting because you can paint with um, colour gel, and I, I sometimes paint on, on cakes. Um, you can add luster uh, with it, or you can buy, it's called a merry colour, or you can get different things, but it's like liquid gold, and you can paint on your fondant. And so having some brushes, don't spend a fortune, you know, um, I also tell you what I did buy, and I know that I haven't got it here because I've got it put away. Um, I bought a blusher brush, you know, blusher for your skin, and it's perfect for putting very fine glitter on like this. It's absolutely perfect. So having brushes is a great tool to have. Um, I've got some little mini rollers here. Now this one's got like a daisy on it. I very, 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 very rarely use it. So they're the main things. Oh, and this is another thing I use. Um, where is it? I hope it's here. Oh, if it's not here, I don't... Oh, scissors are always important. Scissors. Oh, here, yes. My tape measure out of a Christmas cracker, because, you know, waste not, want not. It's perfect for measuring your cakes and measuring the amount of fondant that you need. And a scalpel. Um, I call it a scalpel. I don't know what the technical term is. And rulers things like that um, and that's basically all I have as far as the little tools are concerned now when you're making cakes you can I'll just bring this one over <laughs> how's everyone doing anyway are you all right I hope you are now before I start that have I got any questions on that um Right, yeah. I'm just going to keep going here. Now, here we have some two cutters and the great shapes. I've got a square. <laughs> I've got a flower. Um, but I also have alphabets. And it's great for putting the names on cakes, especially when you're just beginning. So that's a T. Sorry, that's a T. And the whole alphabet is in there. And they're all in... Um, they're all in... Uh, the steel okay and I use them a lot so get some cutters shapes if you like flowers buy some flower shapes um and and, and alphabets is a good one there's loads of alphabets out there you know you can choose you what what you want but I've also got and I'll just bring these over oh, these you need cutters as well and they're ideal because I have different I've only put a selection here but I have different sizes but these are great for making cupcake, cupcake toppers. Because if you're wanting to start out, rather than, I know people want to dive in and they want to, um, they want to make a cake and put it together. And I understand that. And yes, give it a go. But a great way to start is to do cupcakes because you're working with a smaller amount of fondant and it just gives you a bit of practice. Plus it's quick and easy. It's a lot easier than doing a cake, crumb coating it, smoothing it, straightening it, and all of this. Start with your cupcakes. It's a great way to start. And you can make little fondant discs and things like that. And I've got some lovely unicorn sprinkles here. I uh, haven't tried the these ones. <laughs> haven't tried these ones yet, um, but I will. Um, and just start using small amounts of fondant, even if it's to make a rose or something like that. And if I've got time, I will show you how to use some of these and maybe make a fondant rose. I've got a little surprise for you as well, if you just hang in there. <laughs> how is everyone? Are you okay? I hope you're all right. Now, you can also use texture mats, and I have one here. The It's broken. The plastic's broken, but I always put it back in there because it's just lasted forever. And... It's a texture mat. Uh, see how pretty that is? I don't know if you can. And you can uh, roll your fondant onto there or do it the other way if you want to. And it's an impression mat and it puts this wonderful impression onto your fondant. So if you're making a cupcake topper, you could even just use these to create a, a nice pattern on your cupcake topper and then add a rose or add a butterfly or things like that so texture mats are a good thing to have don't go over the top just choose the one you like and which one you think you'll use the most 
And also, sorry if I'm oh, getting in the way here. In here, oh, I can't get the lid off. It's a music box, by the way, if you can hear music. Um, I'm, my mother got me it, uh, my late mother, and I've kept it. And I use it now for my cake things. But these are ideal, these little poppy tools. And I'll show, I might show a demonstration of how to use it and how little you need to know to make a cake, okay? How little you need to know. And when I say that is, people think you need to go on a big course or you need to do, start small and you will learn so much by doing it once. And I know a lot of my cake, Christmas cakers out there who've never made a, a Christmas cake before, not only made their first ever Christmas cake, but they decorated it too. Some of them didn't and some of them just made it exactly how they wanted it. But isn't that fantastic? They gave it a go and they probably were, had no tools at all or very little. And they still produce some fantastic, fantastic cakes. So you don't have to go out and spend a fortune, I promise you. And these little ones are great. And the little plastic, you can get leaves. There's a leaf, a uh, flower or whatever. Or oh, daisies. And you can adorn your cake with those. Okay, and I'm going to show you something shortly that might help. So there's that. Now, if you're wanting to make little bits for your cake, you can just use regular fondant. And to be honest with you, that's exactly what I do. Um, so I've just got a note here. Eileen Raybould asked me, um, could you include rolling out and covering a cake in fondant hi eileen thank you so much for your question and it's a great question and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this into two parts this one is just really about tools equipment a little bit of a demonstration i've got one lined up for you and to go through the intricate basics <laughs> the intricate basics as in what do i need how do i use it but i will do a ne another live next week uh, next Thursday showing you how to decorate a cake because I think it's such a it would be such a long video today here, here Eileen that I couldn't really do it as well as so I'll split it into two so next week I will do a demonstration on how you cover a cake I hope that helps you and Hilda somebody called Hilda contacted me I have forgotten her surname and I'm so sorry but Hilda asked me if I would show her how to make wedding cakes. This tutorial is for beginners, Hilda. A lovely question. Um, and it is something I will get into maybe once, or t once, maybe next year, maybe next year. I'm really wanting to concentrate on my beginners because they really need to know the basics first. And thanks for your question. It is something I will do in the future. But um, wedding cakes is kind of, advanced level and i'm just concentrating today on the novice baker okay and um, i have made a few wedding cakes in my time for my family and friends and uh yeah i i, I could i could do that i definitely could do that so right i'm gonna have a drink of water any questions while i'm having a break just having a drink of i promise you it's water oh did you like mystery baker <laughs> My husband bought me that as well. Isn't he adorable? All right, hold on. Mm. Any questions anyone has? Because no, no, not as yet. Right, that's fine. That's fine. Don't be shy. <laughs> don't, be, don't be shy. Right, fondants. Now there's different... Oh, hi. Oh, I missed you all. Oh, this is terrible. Sorry, I film on my phone, so I'm always apologising, but it's true. I'm just a home baker with my mobile phone. So everything you see, every cake you see I make, every cake you see I decorate, it's not with a special camera that makes it look good. It's just my phone. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> All right. So, covering the cake. <clears throat> I want to talk about fondant. And I do, I mean, I'm not sponsored or anything like that because I, I wouldn't, it's not my bag anyway. But um, everything that I show you is just my personal opinion. It's not, I'm not sponsored to tell you how good something is. Fondant, right. 
my experience in using different brands, and I have had quite a bit, and I have tried and tested, I will have to say that the shop bought white icing is one of the best icings you can start with. Absolutely. Not only is it great for covering a cake, it's also a cheap way of, instead of buying these, for example, I've bought these a black and a red because I find it's hard to mix my own colours with to get that lovely vivid red or that jet black. So I buy them. And you can pay about £2.50, well, up to £2.50 for a 250 gram pack. These, however, I got from the freezer shop <laughs> and I've been testing them out and they're about 60 pence each. And they're really good, actually. They are actually really good. I wouldn't cover a cake in it, but I definitely would use it for making models and putting embellishments on my cake. So Tesco's great. Tesco's fondant, for example, is great for just or Asda's or whatever. Their home, their own make, their own brand. Absolutely perfect for applying to a cake. There is more expensive brands and one of them being Renshaw, which I, I personally do like. That's just a personal opinion. But that would be only if I was making a wedding cake, I would use that. It's just so wonderful. It's a wonderful product to use, especially their ivory. Their ivory white, it's called Celebration. And it's the most adorable fondant to ever use. It's a dream. <laughs> but that's just my personal opinion. I'm not sponsored. <laughs> So, yeah, for making models and embellishments, don't spend a fortune. And the great thing about white fondant that you can buy from the shop, just from your grocery store, you can mix it with gels. And I'll just show you. I'm just going to get up off my chair and see if I can find my... Sorry, I, I always up and down, aren't I? Always up and down. <sighs> I don't have one here. But... Um, Colour gels. I'll try and get, in fact, I'll get one. Hang on, hang on. Hold on, guys. This is live. <laughs> this is live coming at you. I just want to show you my colour gels. Okay, there's one. There's one, that'll do. That'll do. I'll just show you one. Sorry. Okay. So, this is Sugar Flare. It's one of the popular brands, and it's a gel. So it's not a liquid colouring. Don't add liquid colouring to your fondant. You'll have a disaster on your hands. I promise you that. You have to use gel colours. Okay. And it's a small amount is required. I use a toothpick. That's another great tool. Toothpicks or cocktail sticks is at the posh word. Um, and I use that for my model making. I use it for getting my... Um, gel colours out of the tub and you only need a little and a little goes a long way and that will last you a long time just buy some primary colours start with you know red yellow pink green blue maybe pink because I do like pink <laughs> but yeah so just a, that's just that and also you can buy the glitters and these are gorgeous absolutely gorgeous i don't know if you can pick that up and be careful to ensure well make sure that you get edible edible glitter oh my hands have gone all dirty hang on i'm gonna wash them hang on <laughs> it's off the top of the um off the top right so we're moving through i'm gonna see if i've got any questions here because i know that some of my subscribers have asked me so I'm going to have a look now. Um, where are we at? Let me have a look through my notes. It's my notes that I need. It's my notes that I need. Hang on. I'll look through my notes with my questions on. Uh, we'll start with this one, shall we? Janet. <laughs> Hi, Janet, if you're watching, I think you are. Um, you're wanting an alternative to buttercream because the you, you, it's too sweet for you. Hi. Hi, Mandy. Hi, Renza. D'Azusa. Hello again. Alison. Hi. 
Better late than never, Alison. Better late than never. Um, so, very quickly. Um, a question. Where was it? I was just going to... Yes, Janet. Alternative... Is there an alternative buttercream? Because I think it's too sweet for Janet. It's too sweet. Yes, there is. You can use a uh, chocolate ganache, but still it's sweet. <laughs> um, you can use a Swiss meringue or an Italian meringue. I prefer the Italian, my opinion. But if you're referred, because I, I, I didn't know the, the entirety of the question, um, but if it, you mean just to decorate it instead of fondant, yes, use all of those. But if you're worried about the amount of buttercream that you see people applying to a cake when they're making it, you don't have to put that much buttercream on. And if you follow my tutorials, I, I, I very rarely put an inch thick of buttercream on the, to cover the cake. It's a very small amount because I don't like it either. I think, you know, you need that nice balance of cake to buttercream. It has to be that nice balance. And you don't have to put as much sugar in to your buttercream. Just reduce it ever so slightly if you don't want it as sweet. But you can use whipped cream. And um, off the top of my head, whipped cream you can use. And someone said to me, you can't. Yes, you can, but you have to stabilize it. And I think, <coughs> excuse me, I think you have, you can use, well, I have used cornstarch to stabilize the cream and it, it will firm up in the fridge if that's what you're wanting. You're not wanting to cover it in fondant, you just want to cover it. You can use whipped cream with a little bit of cornstarch or corn flour, sorry, I keep calling it the American version, um, or a little bit of glycerine, but cornstarch is easier for the beginner. I hope that answers your question. Which brand of cutters do you use? For gum paste flowers. <laughs> um, great question there, Rensa. Um, I just use what's the cheapest. I'll be totally frank. I don't go with fancy. Some of them I bought were from... Have you ever heard of Wish? <laughs> well, I've bought a few from Wish. Uh, well, this was going back maybe last year. But I've bought them from um, just... Do regular supermarket. I bought them online. Amazon's a good place to start, but you don't need to spend a fortune. That's what I'm saying. Just buy the PME is a good one. Um, I like them, and uh, yeah, and that's all. You just choose the ones you like. What shapes? If you like love hearts, buy love hearts. If you like stars, buy stars. That's what I would do. I wouldn't worry about having every single cutter there is out there because I don't. I just have a few flowers, a few hearts, and I'm going to show you now something. So I hope you're ready. <laughs> this is live. Oh, here's another thing. I'm digressing, but I'm going to just. Uh... This is how I store my fondant. Um, so I will take it all out and show you. So first of all, I pack it tightly with cling film, cling wrap. Then I put it in a little jiffy bag, whatever you want to call them, sandwich bag. And then I put it in an airtight container. And that's how I store it. And that's it. So, you know, I don't usually store fondant that's had CMC Tylos powder added to it, but I'm going to go through that in a second. So I'm going to take this out. Because I'm going to show you something, ladies and gentlemen. Because I put my thinking cap on, which is very rare. <laughs> which is very rare. So, I'm going to take that out. I'm going to move, start moving things out of the way. Because I do... Oh, here's another texture mat. This is a wool effect. And they're really nice. And nice for winter cupcakes or something. And you just rub roll your fondant over and you, you've got this lovely texture. Or you can do it the other way around, depending on how large the project is. But they're so wonderful. They can make a woolly scarf for your snowman at Christmas and things like that. I'm just trying to get your brain and your imagination working here. So we have got our fondant and it doesn't have any CMC added to it. So what I'm going to suggest, what I suggest to you is I don't usually store fondant that has CMC Tylos powder added to it because I don't think it lasts. I know people say it does, but ah, it doesn't really. So that's why when I use fondant, I use small amounts. 
So if I'm doing a project and I only need that much, I won't put CMC in all of it. I'll just put the CMC Tylos powder in the bit that I'm using and put this away for a later date, which is what I'm going to do now for you. Okay, okay, we're moving fast. So this is CMC Tylos powder. And what basically that does is it changes the molecular structure of your fondant. So for example, if I, I'll just warm this up in my hands because it's been put away, but um, it's stretchy. Can you see? Stretchy, gooey. <laughs> and we want to change that consistency. Okay, and by, I've got some CMC Tylos powder here. You don't need as much as this. You just can buy it in a small little, almost the size of this, almost the size of your colour gels. And you only need a small amount. A little goes a long way. So I'm going to use this fondant. So I always warm the fondant up before I start, always. And it, that applies when I'm making a, a cake and rolling out fondant. You need to warm it up, bring it back. So if you're just taking the block of fondant that you're making your cake with out of the packet, don't just start rolling it. It needs to be warmed up. You'll get such a lovely finish from that. So, <clears throat> right. Voila. <laughs> and I'm just going to pop, dip it in my CMC powder, just like so. Don't need a lot. That's it. I'll remove that out of the way because I have, I have every likelihood of knocking that over. So I start to knead it first and then I roll into a sausage chip <laughs> and I bring it in on itself. Um, I do it faster than that, but I'm just showing you slowly. And that just makes sure that the CMC powder is distributed evenly throughout the fondant. All right. So that's how I work with small projects. OK, so I've rolled it back into a ball like this. And so I'm going to make some hearts for you, but I want, there's a reason why I'm going to show you. So the cutters that you're talking about, um, any you want. I'm not going to recommend a certain thing because I've tried different price ranges and they're all round about the same, you know. But when you have mixed CMC in the foundation, it's still edible. Of course it is, Natalie. Absolutely. 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 Um, it is edible. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't. I don't put anything on my cake that isn't edible, uh, Natalie. Um, yes, it is. I mean, it's not the best to taste. Although it still, it still tastes like icing. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't put anything that wasn't edible. Everything on my cakes. That's why I very. I did it for my Christmas cakes. I put a, a real ribbon round because I had a lot to do. I was YouTubing. I was having to make all sorts of other things as well but normally all of my cakes everything on the cake you can eat including the ribbon so i always do edible you know fondant ribbons as well so uh so i'm just rolling so i kind of turn as i go and i start in the center and move in and out and i put some cornstarch down but you can use icing sugar um and i'm rolling it and turning it and it and what happens was if this was just regular fondant and I hadn't ha added the CMC powder to it, I wouldn't be able to get it as thin and still be able to pick it up. OK. To go on top of the cupcakes, Janet. Hi, Janet. Renza, metal or plastic? I'm not sure if you question Renza, but uh, thanks for joining. us, And thank you, everybody, for joining. So because I'm use the CMC Tylos powder, it allows me to get that fondant a lot thinner than it would if it was just regular fondant. And it will dry rock hard, nice and hard. I mean, fondant will dry hard, but not as rigid. And it holds its shape. And that's the difference. Okay, so I'm going to use a heart cutter here. Right, I'm just going to use one just for, for today. <laughs> and I press it in and then I pop it out. Ah, oh, it's stuck, but hey, there we go. It pops out. I'll use a different one. It's because it's still soft. I usually wait a minute, but I'm doing my demonstration. So I pick it in there and I pop it out like that. Can you see? And you, you're thinking, well, that's a heart. How can I decorate a cake with a heart? 
Well, you'll be surprised, ladies and gentlemen. You will be surprised. So <laughs> I'll just do another one for look. Hold on. Always do another one. And that's how easy. They just pop out like so. I hope that's picking up. Can you see my lovely little love hearts? All right. And then what I'm going to do, and this is just for me, but you could put some luster on there. You could put some glitter on your heart. You can make the heart pink, red, blue, green. And what I'm going to do is, with my scribing tool, I hope this is picking up, but I'll bring it closer. I'm just going to make a mark down the middle. And I'll bring that up to the camera so you can see. Just put a line through it. Can you see how I've done that? And that doesn't take any tools, really. And then I'm going to nip it like so. Can you see? Like that. Pretty. All right. I'm just going to put that heart there. And I'm going to bring something over. Just bear with me, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Hang on. <clears throat> I've just dropped something on the floor. <clears throat> All right. All right. I have covered a cake. Well, it's not cake, it's a dump, it's a foam. But I have covered a cake. And people have said, oh, you, you, you don't, you have to have a lot of techniques to be able to make a pretty cake. Well, I'm going to say that you can make a pretty cake with just lovely cream love hearts. <laughs> and well, let's see, shall we? And I've just started this. I don't know if you can see. Uh, probably not. Uh, okay and that's covered in fondant I don't know if it's picking up very well but um, that's my cake here and I've covered it in cream fondant and I've added a little bit of this this is called rainbow dust they're wonderful fine glitters and this one's called comet white and it you can put it on any colour cake and it will sparkle but it won't lose you won't lose the colour of the fondant if you understand and I've just made that heart. You saw me make it. Can you see? Um, and then I'm going to get my... I'm going to get a brush. Any brush will do. A little bit of... Mandy Hall, lovely! <laughs> yeah, I wanted to prove to you that you don't have to know how to do loads of things to make something pretty for your daughter or your son or your mother or... You don't have to. I've just made heart shapes and I just thought, you know what, I'm going to show you how simple and effective it can look. So I've got a little bit of edible glue. And the great thing about CMC, Natalie, I don't know if you're still there, but CMC makes the most amazing, amazing glue, edible glue. And all you do is, I've got some here, is I just put a little bit of powder in there. And it's one part CMC to 30 parts water. So I usually put half a teaspoon in and just fill a little ramekin up and that will it's the best glue in the business it will hold more mainly any everything and anything okay so I so saw versatile that CMC so I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on my cake here it's a little bit fragile so that's my love heart and that's all I've done is pinch the heart okay so here we go. <laughs> Here we go. I move my and with my scribing tool, I can just make sure because I don't want to touch it. I just want to be gentle. It's a very gentle. I'm just putting my heart on, okay. And as you can see, I've just done this for demonstration purposes. It's just a form, and it's a great way to learn. Buying the form dummies, if you do want to start learning how to decorate cakes, is to use a form dummy. And I've just done that for demonstration purposes. But as you can see, all I've done is put hearts all the way around and put a few falling hearts here. And I could keep going, going all the way around and decorating the entire cake and maybe have a real big heart stood up in the center at the top and have some glitter on it it that's it it's simple and using the same color which i've made my own it was white tesco fondant there you go um i should have shares in tesco um it's white tesco fondant and i just added some cream color gel just a touch and i changed it to this beautiful warm ivory and i coordinated and all of the 
that's just the fondant that there that I made the ha that heart out of. It's just the fondant that was left over from covering the cake. And I didn't add CMC to it. Only add CMC to the fondant you're about to use and apply to the cake. Because people, I've heard people say, oh yes, put it in a container and it lasts. Once you've added CMC, it doesn't really. And I, I, you know, I don't know if there's any other cake decorators out there who'll be honest and say it doesn't. <laughs> but it doesn't. But re regular fondant like this, like the one I've got here, will last. It will last. It's a lot, last as long as you um, need it in there, really. Um, I mean, I wouldn't use it after two months, but um, it will certainly last for your next project. So there's my little quick demonstration. Now, there was a lovely Eileen, um, as I say, I think she asked if I was sure to cover the cakes, and I think I've covered that, that I will do a separate live so I can set up on my worktop at the other side of the kitchen and I can show you how to decorate the cake. But because I wanted just to go down to the basic brass tacks of cake decorating, what you need, what you don't need, um, and spend what you think. Don't be spend, I mean, I know someone who's spent thousands on cake decorating equipment. Um, and to be honest, I don't think she uses not even 5% of that, you know? And I think, she, you know, I'm not, she wouldn't be um, embarrassed by me mentioning it. Um, so, I've got a question from um, Shugis. A lot of beginners have problems with ele elephant skin on their fondant, elephant skin. So I'm going to move my pretty cake made with just heart cutters that's all it was just that and you can make them as your, your cake pretty you don't you don't have to start out making three tier cakes start out small do something delicate and pretty do something that you you know you find easy enough and i'll just move that out of the way i hope i've inspired you isn't it pretty just with love heart cutters that's it <laughs> all right so I'll just move this out of the way. <clears throat> Elephant skin. So Sugar said a lot of beginners struggle with it. Right, I've just got this. I'll bring it over now. I'll bring it over for you, Sugars. Right. Or Shugi, I hope I'm not. Elephant skin. Oh, there we have it. <laughs> And a lot of beginners do have problems with elephant skin, but not, it doesn't have to just be a beginner, actually. And this is usually due to a couple of things. The, the first being that it's something that's beyond your control, and it's usually the weather in the environment, to be fair. It's usually those conditions, especially if it's very dry, hot, and you've not worked quickly enough to get that fondant rolled out. The other thing could be that you're using too much icing sugar. Very pretty, Cheryl. Oh, thank you, Cheryl. <laughs> yes, it is pretty. It was pretty. <laughs> but I just wanted to show you, Cheryl, that you don't have to do anything fancy to make something beautiful. So I thought, what's the easiest thing to do? And I thought, right, cut out hearts and make a cake and see how pretty I can make it by just doing that. And you can. And I sometimes think by using the same colour, especially a soft ivory, and making ivory embellishments, even a, a rose as well if you wanted to. I might show you how to do a rose in a minute if, if I've got time. Um, you know, it's it's perfect. So, it could, I will on to elephant skin. I have got distracted. I'm sorry. Um, elephant skin. So it could be the environment. Very humid, arid, dry, hot. And we do get hot summers in the UK as well, so, you know. But also it could be that you're using too much corn flour, cornstarch, and I tend to not put any cornstarch or icing sugar on the top of the fondant. It's always just under it. And not a lot. You'd be surprised how little you actually need. But again, it's practice makes perfect. Um, if you ever do get that happening in your fondant, which is kind of like cracking okay what i would do and um i know everybody does they use something all the professionals anyway um they use treks 
in the UK. I think in the America it's called Crisco. And in Australia, I think it's called Kofa or Koffer. Um, and what you do is you put a little bit of Trex or Crisco on your hands, which is just a wet, white wedge vegetable pack. And people have said to me, that must taste awful. No, it's vegetable oil is in fondant. So, you know, it's just in block form. And it's pure white. It won't change the color of your fondant. So I usually, any cracking on my fondant or even when I'm making models, the fondant could start to get stiff. I just put a little bit of Trex or Crisco or Coffa on my hands and I knead it through like that and it will take out that. If that's happening to your fondant when you're rolling it out to put on a cake, the same thing would apply. Pick up your fondant, roll it back into a ball and, um, yeah, put your tricks on your hands and knead that through and you will get rid of it. It'll soften it up. It'll make it more moist again, okay? I hope that's answered your question, Shugis. Okay, I'll move that out of the way because we're done with that one. Next... Oh, next question. I'll just look at my questions now. Um, air pockets. All right. Air pockets in your cake. Yes. Now, I'll just show you. Shall I bring my cake over? Yes, I will. I'll bring my cake back in just to show you. Okay. Um, air pockets. Sometimes... You can find air pockets in, just put that back in there. Um, sometimes you can find air pockets in your cake. And um, so it's it can be caused by two things. All right, now, let me, well, it could be, yeah. The first one is a lot of people, especially in the summer and obviously in the winter, they do their, they fill their cake with their buttercream and they crumb coat it. And they put it in the fridge and then they take it out before they cover it in their fondants. All right. And sometimes there's air trapped between the layers of cake and the buttercream. Sometimes. And that when the weight, it can push out and create, create in the cold air can create an air pocket. It's just literally like a big bump, <laughs> like a big boil <laughs> on your cake. Um, so that can happen. It's just trapped air. And one thing you'll, you can do um, to resolve that is this. The first thing is, when, you, when you've got your, say pretend this is your fondant for your rolling out that you're gonna put on your cake. A lot of people do that and they stretch it and they stretch the fondant. What you do is you knead close to the board, okay? So you, you're not lifting, you're not adding a lot of air. You know, you knead close to the board, all right? And, it doesn't trap any excess air, all right? So that can reduce it. That will definitely reduce the pockets. But also try not to put your cake in the fridge for hours on end on a really hot day because that can cause a lot of problems. And I will link a video below of how you deal with humidity um, and problems with condensation on a cake as well. And I'll link that video that I did below um for you when this is over so that's that so i've got a message from victoria kelly and i think she's referring to my christmas cake or a christmas cake question and that's fair enough i will definitely answer you victoria i'll just move my cake out of the way when putting on apricot jam to stick to the icing do you have to heat the jam first um, I've, oh, I'm sorry, there's my questions. I'll move them out of the way. Um, you, you can heat it, yes. Yes, you can, but I, I've got a little trick for you. And the reason why I don't like heating the jam or the apricot jam, because I really don't like boiling it or warming it up. I don't, I don't know, it just doesn't seem right. So I've got a little bit of a demonstration here for you, Victoria. So, Hartley's. So I'll put a little bit of jam that's just out of the fridge and just pretend that's apricot jam or whatever. Or even if you're putting jam onto your cake as you're filling, all right? Some people microwave it. Don't know why they need to, but they do. You don't need to. 
all you do is you place it in your bowl. I mean, obviously, there'd be more than that. And you just start, because it's, it's just in jelly form, but you just start stirring. Okay? Just start stirring like that. And it loosens it up without heating it up and changing the consistency. And to be honest with you, it changes the flavour by microwaving it. And you're left with a nice strawberry or raspberry or apricot sauce. It's a lot easier to spread as well. And that's a little trick for when you're putting jam fillings in cakes. Just warm it up with a spoon, not a microwave. I, I definitely prefer that method. And I hope that answers your question, Victoria. I'll move that out of the way. Right, next. <laughs> next question. Um, oh, sorry, the air pockets. There is a trick to solve your air pocket. If you do have an air pocket, and this is your cake, we'll bring this one in, shall we? You get a toothpick or a skewer. And even if the air pocket's at the side, it doesn't matter. You need to make a chimney. So what you do is... <clears throat> You, in the center of the top of your cake, you place in your skewer and then you massage the side of the, where the air pocket is, if it's at the top or at the side, if it's at the side, just massage up and it will push out of that air hole. That air, that trapped air will come out and that's simple as that. So I hope that answers that question. Hope so. And any more questions? Yes, a uh, question from Petra Tess. Uh, my fondant keeps tearing. Right, well, that could be easily resolved, Petra. Um, what you need to make sure is you don't roll it too thin, okay? It's <clears throat> if you roll it too thin and it's only fondant, it hasn't got any CMC powder in it or anything like that, it's just regular fondant, and you roll it too thin. When it goes over the cake, it will pull and stretch and it could tear like that. So I always suggest that you roll your fondant between five mil and eight mil thick, especially when you're just beginning. You will have no problems if it's that thick. Any thinner, you could run into difficulty, especially when you're just learning. So that's what I would suggest there. And I've got a question from Cindy. Taff four. Um, my fondant is sagging. Oh, right. Okay. Well, usually that only ever happens when you've put too much colouring in your fondant. That's why I prefer using gel colours because you need just a small amount and it doesn't make the fondant wet or change its consistency. Because if you put too much liquid or too much gel or food colouring in it, it can basically, when it's put out, it starts to melt. It literally melts off your cake. How, oh, that would be a nightmare, absolute nightmare. And I've also got a question from Evergreen. And she says, can I have, can I store homemade icing and how long for? Buttercream, you can store it for at least two weeks in the fridge. So, I'm kind of, I mean, there's probably some more questions here um, and I'm struggling, but um, is there any questions from Hugh? I'm just going to have a drink of water here. Is there anything I've missed? Is there anything you'd like to have an answer to? I mean, I've tried to cover as much as I could under the circumstances, but um, is there anything else? I'll just get a drink of water. Hello from Toronto, Canada. Bless you. <laughs> oh, and what is that? Oh, this. Sorry, I missed the person's name. This is corn flour. I'll lift it out, but show you. <laughs> it's corn flour. But I'll just put the lid back on here. Hang on. I wish I'd not done that to show you. But, um... <laughs> but it's a little bag with corn flour in. And I use that to put down on my work surface if I'm rolling fondant. You can put icing sugar in there as well. Sorry, it was Cheryl Marlin. What is the little tub with the purple lid? Yeah, that's for my cornstarch. Um, and I use that, oh, icing sugar. You can use it for icing sugar. And I put it on, I use it when I'm doing small projects. 
and it stops it from sticking and, and tearing and things like that. I hope that answered you there. Um, <clears throat> have I got any more? <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to have a drink of water. I've been talking for an hour and <laughs> my voice is going... My voice is going. My husband will be very pleased. Um, right. Evergreen also asks, what is self-raising flour? Is it the same as a cake box flour? No, it's not. It's not the same evergreen. Um, cake box flour, uh, it's not it's something we use in the UK, but it's closer to plain flour. And so what I would suggest you do is for every, say, 120 grams of all-purpose flour, add one and a half teaspoons of baking powder to it. That's how I would do it. Um, yeah. And a shout out, shout out, shout outs. I've got a few here. Shout out Je Jessie L, Cookie Purple Rose, Lisa Wright, Jennifer, and Alison, e Alison Evans. Oh, there's quite a few. <laughs> I've lost them all, but there's just a few. And I just want to thank you all for joining me today. I don't know if there is any more questions. And if I've missed anything, I'm terribly sorry. Um, because I get a bit nervous when I'm doing these lives, I I have to say. Uh, but I do hope I've kind of inspired you to give it a go. I mean, I'll tell you one thing I will say before I end. <clears throat> Excuse me. Try working on your cakes as well. I know a lot of people go into cake decorating before they've mastered the cake baking. Um Try out your recipes. Get it right. Make sure that your cake tastes really good. <laughs> I'm talking about people who are wanting to move into the professional realm. But those home bakers, we all know how to make a good cake, don't we? <laughs> and uh, I hope I've inspired you to get into the kitchen and start cake decorating or giving it a go. Um, yes, cornstarch is the same as corn flour, Brenda. Hi, Cheryl. <laughs> it is a handy thing. <laughs> it is a handy thing. It is because it, it just stores it in one place because it's messy cornstarch and icing sugar, as you'll know. Um, but that is it. I think I've covered what I wanted to. Um, please don't forget to hit the like button if you've enjoyed the video. If there's any questions I've missed or anything you think of later, I will try and get back to you. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. I'm glad it's been helpful. I, well, I'm really pleased that it has. Um, I Look, I blag my lives. I'm not very good. <laughs> As I say, I'm not a professional. I'm just sat in my kitchen trying my best to encourage people to get in the kitchen and, and, and bake. And if uh, I can encourage you into starting cake decorating, then even better, because it's such a wonderful, wonderful hobby. Um, it's very therapeutic and it brings so much joy. Thank you, Natalie. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so pleased you've all enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Um, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. I keep, do you know what? I always forget to plug my channel. I have no clue, do I? They say, mention your Instagram. Oh, I don't really bother with that. <laughs> Thanks for your time, everybody. Hope to speak to you soon. Bye.